Hey guys, DragonEye13 here, and I'm about to start a Let's Play of Virtue's Last Reward, which is the second game in a series called Zero Escape. Now, why didn't I do a Let's Play of the first one? Because it was on DS, and I don't really have any good setup for recording from a DS, so I didn't record that. But, just to make sure you guys are lost when I start the second game, I'm going to do a brief recap of the first game, just so you know what happened and you, you can be better prepared for what's going to happen in the second game. Now, I'm going to start off with the non-spoilery sort of plot synopsis, just in case you listen to this and you're like, hmm, okay, this sounds like a new game, I'm going to try it out. So, the first game, nine hours, nine persons, nine doors, or some variation of that, nine nine. It was an adventure game focused on room escape puzzles interspersed with visual novel sections where, you know, the characters talked and you occasionally made a decision about where to go. And the story followed Junpei, who was kidnapped by a mysterious man in a gas mask calling himself Zero. And Zero kidnaps him and tells him he's been chosen to take part in a nonary game. And then he wakes up on a sinking ship. Oh, and he meets eight other strangers who were also kidnapped and told they were going to play the nonary game. And then they're told the rules. That they have nine hours to get out of the sinking ship, and they have to go through a series of numbered doors that have dangerous puzzles behind them. And their only hope of escape is to find a door with a nine on it. That's the basic plot. If you think that sounds cool, give it a try. I actually do recommend it, even though this game can be a little dickish with uh, getting bad ends based on the paths you take. Oh my god, that was annoying. Anyways, now I'm going to explain what actually happened in the game itself. So, yeah, this is the spoiler section. So you got your nine characters. You got Ace with the, with the bracelet with the one on it. Snake with the bracelet with the two on it. Santa with the bracelet with the three on it. Clover with the four bracelet. Junpei had the five bracelet, but he doesn't get a cool name because he accidentally gave everyone his name. Then you have Junpei's childhood friend Akane, who has the six bracelet, so she got the code name of June. You have Seven with the, well, Seven bracelet. Lotus with the eight bracelet, and then a mysterious ninth man who never gets a nickname because he dies. So the big plot twist of this game is that this is not the first nonary game. This is actually the second. The first one was an experiment held by Cradle Pharmaceutical, where they kidnapped nine t uh, pairs of siblings and put them in two different places, Building Q and the Gigantic, which is the name of the, name of the ship. And the purpose of this experiment was to sort of prove the existence of and find a way to control this morphogenetic field or this morphic resonance, as it's called. Which is actually a real thing, in that there are people that think it exists, but there's no scientific evidence for it, so this is where fiction takes over. Anyway, the idea was that the children in Building Q would have the exact same interiors and puzzles as the children on the Gigantic, so as they solved the puzzles and figured out where to go, they would transmit the message and solutions to the children on the Gigantic. Sounds dumb? It is. But it worked. At least partially. Because there were several children that were able to establish a connection, supposedly. We're not explicitly told much about it. Outside of one occasion, which I'll get to in a minute. But the person in charge of the this project turns out to be Ace, who is in the current game. And the ninth guy? Yeah, he was the guy who came up with the actual experiment itself. So this second nonary game is all about getting revenge on them for all the torture they put the children through. Right? Well, no, because there's actually a bit more to this. See, the true identity of Zero and their accomplice is that Zero was actually June, aka Akane, and her, and her accomplice was Santa, who was actually her brother, and they were both in the first Nonari game. But, Akane died. Well, supposedly. See, this is where things get a little weird, 
because as Junpei enters the final room with everybody else after Ace betrays them, he realizes that he not only has a connection to someone through this morphic field, he's got a connection through time to Akane in nine years ago in the first game. And it t so it turns out that his connection with her through time is what actually helped her solve the final puzzle and escape the ship alive. So, nine years later, she works with her brother to make sure the scenario she saw through the connection actually comes to pass, so that, you know, she doesn't die and stuff. But it was also a, re a revenge plot, I guess, against the people who set up the first game. And speaking of the first game, turns out all the characters do have connections to that first game. As I said, Ace was the one who set it up. Snake and Clover are actually siblings who were part of the experiment. And I, as I said, Santa was also part of it, along with June. And Seven was the detective who actually came to save the children. And got them away on a lifeboat. And Lotus, with the eighth bracelet, she wasn't directly involved in the first game, but her children were. Although this only ever gets mentioned in one specific ending, so... That's the general plot of what happened. As, as for the ending itself, after Junpei successfully connects through time, which, by the way, is never really fully explained how that works. It's just like a one passing line that says, Oh, we have a special ability that lets us do that. I don't know how that works, but alright. So after he solves the final puzzle and gets everybody out, uh, they find that Santa and June are missing. But they left a car for everybody else, and they see fresh tracks that indicate that they left a little while before everyone else. So everyone's driving away all happy, ready to reunite with everybody else. Uh, Ace is bound and gagged and probably going to be arrested for the shit he did before. And everyone's happy. Also, there was this side plot about this Egyptian mummy that was frozen but can never thaw and ice nine and stuff. And, but that wasn't really overall important to the plot until one ending screen where you see the ice mummy, or at least someone that very much looks like the ice mummy, hitching a ride. And it's, it's a very weird ending, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. But that's everything that happened in the first game, leading up to the second. Now I know there are returning characters throughout the series. I only know of one specifically for the second game, but I'm sure there's more. So that's why this little history recap is necessary. Anyways, that's, all. that's it for the recap. See you all for the first part of Let's Play Virtue's Last Reward.